Hello and welcome to everyone. Today our guest is MMA Big UFC fighter Joe Elmore. Joe, can you please say a bit uh, about yourself so we can kick off with this interview? Thank you so much for joining. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, my name is Joe Hitman Elmore. Uh, I fight out of X3 Sports Gracie Baja in Atlanta, Georgia. I just signed with the BKFC. Uh, I gotta, uh, I'm actually going to go live and announce uh, another fight. I believe I can announce it now. Uh, Tom Schoff on the uh, September 11th Daytona Beach 9-11 uh, Memorial fight. And uh, yeah, so I've got that coming up. I'm training my butt off and ready to knock somebody else out again. Thank you so much. Uh, when did you start uh, training uh, MMA? Uh, man, I'm 37 now. Uh, when, I think it was like 1989 or 1990, early. Uh, I started Taekwondo with Buddy Colburn. Uh, under the American Taekwondo Association. Uh, I did gymnastics, Taekwondo, and wrestling, grappling when I was a kid. So kind of been doing combat sports my whole life, man. Uh, I got my first black belt when I was 14. I probably had 100 Taekwondo contact fights back then. Uh, still doing it now, man, just my whole life. That's awesome. Who is now, coaching you at the moment? Um, uh, I, got a, I got several coaches, man. I cross-train with a lot of guys. Uh, Warren Thompson, uh, one of my head coaches, for my grappling is Fabio Costa. He's uh, uh, head of the Gracie Baja uh, here in uh, Georgia. Tony Tucci with X3 Sports. Uh, he brings in a lot of guys, man. We have uh, we have several coaches. We have Coach Aladino. Uh, he was an Olympic silver medalist. Uh, we have Coach Isidoro. Uh, he cross trains a lot of guys. I believe he was the Olympic team coach out of Cuba. You know, X3 Sports brings in uh a lot of guys and we give visas and stuff to bring in really excellent coaches because we have guys like jared gooden in the ufc uh we have a lot of guys at our camp and a lot of specific trainers that come in so man i have to give credit to a lot of people i'd have to write them all down but that's awesome. uh, i've cross trained with you know manu fought duke rufus uh, uh warren thompson i've been cross training with them lately at knuckle up he's uh he fought for glory uh with manu so i mean you know yeah. Anybody I can make these better, man. You know, everybody, uh, Bruce Lee said, don't be the glass, be the water. And everybody got a little bit of different flavor. That's excellent. Uh, can you describe how did you get your uh, moniker Hitman? Uh, okay, so when I first started fighting uh, MMA, uh, actually in a cage, I thought he was in my corner last fight for BKFC. His name is Sammy Collinwood. Uh, I, that I, I've been training MMA for three months. Like, you know, I did karate, I did boxing, I did gymnastics. I did all these different things, but, uh, MMA was different. It was where we all come together. And, uh, I've been training for like three months specifically. And they called me the animal because when I fight, it's very animalistic, man. I'm just going for the victory, for the kill, like a lion or a bear or after his prey. That's, how, that's what we are when we're there. And I had nicknamed myself the animal. And this guy was, uh, I was supposed to fight 155 pounds. He was 11 and 0 out of Team Capitao. Uh, I believe I pronounced that correctly. Danny Ruiz out in uh, uh, Destin, Florida. And uh, uh, one, of, one of his guys were an associate gym. He was 11 and 0, and nobody would fight him. And they asked me if I'd fight him. I was 0 and 0. I was 0 and 0 at the time. And um, uh, I took the fight. So after the fight, I won. I believe I was a first round knockout, one minute. Uh, Sammy Collingwood was the promoter of UCF, Ultimate Championship Fighting, not UFC, different. It was an amateur league. So, but uh, he came up running to me, picked me up, and was like, dude, you're not an animal. You're the hitman. So ever since then, because he was supposed to beat me, this guy literally was supposed to whip my ass. And they, you know, I'm a little country, if you can't tell by my voice. So I guess they underestimated me and thought I was some kind of untrained redneck. And so now I'm just the hitman. It just kind of stuck, so everybody just started calling me Hitman. Yeah, it looks like pretty much good. Uh, can you please discuss your professional MMA debut? Do you remember that fight? Uh, yeah, it was actually against a friend of mine, Sunny South. Okay, uh, I was uh, I was eleven and zero at the time for a promotion out of Alabama. Me and this guy had been talking, and. Uh, uh, we actually become best friends. It's a crazy story, man. I come up here. I was 10-0 and 0 at the time uh, uh, as an amateur, but I had been fighting in the underground league. There was no rules. Like, literally, we put on Walmart gloves, and we beat each other with elbows. I mean, it was no commission. It was all underground shoot box style stuff. 
and then I come in and you know it, it was it was for me dude like we got three hundred and fifty dollars to show three hundred and fifty to win people always think these when you become pro, you make all this money and stuff. But dude, they, we have to grind our ass off to eventually make it. And I remember just going in front of there, and it was at a place called Wild Bills for a dude named Dave Oblaz. He now owns NFC against Sunny South. And uh, dude, I went in there and I just seen the lights, and, and it was it was it was crazy. It was amazing. I knew I'd, I knew I'd finally made it. But then I look back now, and I'm like, God, man, it's not what it it's not what I thought it was then. But it was more glorious than what we go through now, really, to be honest. I was just happy I finally, uh, my whole life's work actually got paid for it the first time. So you win your next fight, right? What do you mean my next fight? Your next professional fight after that. Oh, you're talking about my bare knuckle boxing debut. No, 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 your second MMA fight. Oh, my second MMA fight? Oh, man, I was not nervous at all. Uh... Dude, after that, I was just ready to go. I mean, I, I I lost my first fight because the guy hit me in the back of the head. I had a vengeance, and I was just like, I'm going to knock the guy out. And that's how every fight's been since then, man. I just went out there to second fight, third fight. I just tried to knock everybody out. I'm either going to get beat or I'm going to win. I mean, I don't like decisions. Can you discuss your Bellator debut? My Bellator debut? Okay, so... My Bellator debut was against, uh, God, uh, uh, Jared, Jared Burke. Burke. Yes. Jared Burke was out of hardcore gym with Roy Singer. Roy Singer was one of the, ulti uh, the original Ultimate Fighter. Um, they had been wanting to match us up for a while, but they didn't have enough money to be able to pay us. So when Bellator had come to town and did the local show at Gwinnett uh, Arena here in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, I wanted to take the fight against him. Uh like I said, man, I, I was finally glad that a big company had called me. Uh, I knew that Roy and all those guys had some good guys there. Uh, and uh, I went in the first round. Uh, uh, I felt like sometimes, man, I'm a better grappler than I am a striker as far as at one point because I'm a world-class grappler too. But I like to fight, man. That's why this bare knuckle is different. And I went in that first round, and I was trying to knock him out, and I let him take me down and get me in an awkward position. And uh, I knew in that second round when I come out, I had to keep my space better and, and be smarter. And once I landed that first left hook on him, I knew it was over. And when I hit him, dude, I, again, it was just one of the most exciting moments I ever had. But I've, I've killed a lot of guys from them. No, don't disrespect. They're all good, man. But I've knocked out everybody I've ever fought from Roy Singer's gym. They were a competition gym at uh, Hardcore and X3 here in Atlanta, Georgia. We kind of had some of the we we're the top two gyms before uh, American Top Team came in, and uh, and I knocked out John Kofer. He went to the UFC. I knocked him. I head kicked knocked him out. If you check it out, you might ask about it later. It was Jared. That's Bush's what I teammate. wanted to ask next. Next question. That was my next question. Yeah, Jose Tizanos was from Hardcore. Um, John Kofer was from Hardcore. We actually became teammates later. I love John Kofer, man. He's a kind dude. He's a school teacher here in Georgia. Uh, but when I'm in the cage, I don't care who you are. You could be my brother. If you're getting paid to fight me, we're going. We're going. You know, like, I ch I'm trying to kill everybody. I'm, and, you know, that's what it is. That's what we're getting paid for. We're fighting. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, that was uh, Jared Burke, man. It was a huge moment. I loved it. I knew I was going to knock him out. He got a little worried when he got on top of me, but that wasn't shit. I'm a good grappler. Nobody, it's, I'm hard to finish, man. If I train and I don't take fights on short notice, when you go look at my record in MMA, it's very deceiving. I think that's what happened with Will Chope when I fought him uh, for BKFC. But I fought uh, Ashmanapova in Kazakhstan for Almighty Pride on three days' notice, dude. They called me on Tuesday night and flew me to Frankfurt, Germany at 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning. I didn't even know I was fighting until Tuesday night. And I was flying to, from to fight for Germany 17 hours and another 12 hours to Kazakhstan, landed in Kazakhstan. I cut 28 pounds on an airplane and a rubber suit and a snowsuit running through the middle of Kazakhstan. And, and I fought that fight, you know, and then uh, I collapsed my lungs and my loss in Canada. I came back three weeks later, took the tube out of my chest after getting surgery from having a collapsed lung. I literally fought seven days after having a tube taken out of my chest. I'm a warrior. I'm different, man. Like, uh, there's probably some smarter things I could have done in my career, 
but when it came to MMA, I just, I like to fight. And, uh, yeah, man, even my losses, they know I was there. Who was the toughest MMA opponent you have ever met? <clears throat> I would say Jordan Rinaldi and uh, uh, Asman from uh, Kazakhstan, dude. That's a talented dude. He's an 11-time combat Sambo world champion. Uh, his, his movement was so perfect. and I mean, his grappling, his transitions. Uh, Jordan Rinaldi was really tough, too. I think he's got three or four fights in the UFC. Uh, but I'm more underprepared for him. I uh, thought I was going to knock him out, and I went out there with a big head with a Conor McGregor complex, kind of, and thought I was going to knock him out because I'd seen him get knocked out, and I underestimated his uh, grappling ability. He trains with Sergio Pena, and Sergio Pena's an amazing grappler, you know? So, And, uh, yeah, so those those two guys definitely on a talent level are some of the best. Will Chope, too. Will Chope, uh, as far as his record, he was really great, but... But I train my butt off, dude. I'm I'm the best I've ever been right now. So I think I could have went back and anybody I've lost to, I think I'd knock them out because I have the ability to understand that range, the movement, and the experience now to knock out everybody. So why did you transition to bare knuckle fighting championship instead of MMA? Was it because of your desire to fight and to stay busy or? Yes, I like to fight, man. I'm a country boy at heart. And we grew up fighting some of my best friends, fighting like those guys from Kazakhstan and Kazakhstan, and you like wrestle bears and shit. Dude, we used to wrestle our fucking dogs, and I mean, we like wrestling. Our friends fought. We we get bored on the weekend and drank beer and beat the hell out of each other. So bare knuckle fighting for me is it, it fighting kind of changed my life. You know what I mean? It gave me the ability to take care of my family. Uh, I get to teach people that would never even pay attention to me. And where I came from, it gets to, I get to meet people that would never even listen to my voice sometimes, you know? So for me, fighting, I get to entertain those people and control. If there's 10,000 people there, I control every emotion they have for that five minutes. And that's like a blessing. It's like, it like makes you feel something. You draw that energy back into you. So, you know, you hear people boo when like, um, Boozman, was controlling the fight with grappling, right? It's respect. Uh, GSP, uh, Floyd Mayweather, some of the best defensive shit in the world. But it's not called defense. It's called fighting. And I mean, I'm defensive and controlled and very technical. But I'm willing to get hit in the face to knock somebody out, to entertain everybody and get that emotional <sighs> from everybody. So that's why I like bare knuckle, man. If, you, if, if you're not punching, the referee breaks you up and you fucking fight again. And it's fun. So, is there some rule in bare knuckle? For example, if you stay away from fighting 5-10 seconds, will the referee warn you? Well, you can't. So, um, like, it's not bare knuckle uh, boxing. It, it, it's bare knuckle fighting. It's different. We've kind of transitioned into, like, we have the ability to clinch. Like, I can grab a guy by the back of his head and pound him by the face. I can reach around and throw an underhook and grab the underarm and if, if, if long as one arm is free the fight continues as soon as there's no motion in two arms and like he grabs my wrist and i can't move two hands the referee has to break the fight up go back in and bang again so as soon as there's not a punch swinging you have to separate you can't both hug each other and clasp hands as soon as that happens they break the fight up back on it and you have to separate and bang again so there's real, there's really no time to, to, to do anything to rest. You got to fight, but it's short rounds, man. It's what uh, two minute rounds, five minutes. Uh, even in MMA, I'm I've fought five five minute rounds before because I've been a main event or a title fighter, and then three five minute rounds. That's fifteen minutes, dude. We two rounds with one minute rest is basically the same thing as bare knuckle boxing is. Now, I know boxers fight two, three-minute rounds and professionals up to 12 rounds, but we're fighting two-minute rounds, and I think MMA fighters, I watched, if you go back and watch this last card, man, MMA fighters did a lot better than the boxers. We, uh, the shorter, more powerful guys did a lot better than the long, taller guys. This is, um, it's, cha it's changing it up and forcing people to fight. I mean, there's, there is no time to separate or boom. So there are no inactivity warnings. I mean, well, if, if you're if you're not punching, you can get deducted. Like, for example, when they say toe the line, 
if you back up off that line when the bell rings, when we first started in that first round, you can get deducted a point. You're not supposed to back up. There are deductions for not fighting. Uh, I mean, it's in my contract that I get paid so much money based upon my performance, and it's up to the, if, if I basically back up and don't perform, they can deduct money from my paycheck. They want us to fight. They're paying us to fight. And people that don't want to fight, this ain't for them. They don't want to watch it. They don't want to do it. I mean, if you don't like getting hit in the face, this ain't the one for you. I mean, I, I appreciate a few people that have signed lately that are big names that uh, that are going to draw a crowd, but I don't know if they're ready for what they signed up for. <laughs> I agree with you about that. It's not sport for everybody. So, can you please describe your bare knuckle debut from beginning to the end? Man, it was amazing. Uh, from the time that they called me, you know, I know Nate Shook, one of their matchmakers. Uh, I've known him for a long time. He works with Dean Tool from Island Fights in Florida. You know, those guys work together. David Fieldman, I've been talking to him forever. He's awesome, man. He's really, I don't know what he's done or who he's friends with or whatever, but that man's put a lot into the sport and made sure the experience was great for the fighters. At least for me, I can't speak for everybody, but the ones I've made friends with, like Soros and Burrito all these guys I met on my fight, man, like we've all just had the same experience. They put us in a nice hotel. Uh, they treat us good. Uh, I don't like the whole COVID thing, but that's not their fault, man. Uh, uh, I knew uh, when I came in and they asked me to fight Will Choke, uh, I've been talking to him for a long time. and But like I said, because of my confusing record, you know, I just wanted to let them know that I was going to go in there and bang, and then they off. But I didn't want to just take a sucker fight. You know what I mean? I wanted a good name, so... When I did win by knockout, it wouldn't be, uh, oh, man, he got lucky. This guy's 1-11. Uh, Will Choke had 119 fights, so I pulled in a big camp. I got mats in my basement. I got mats in my garage. I pulled guys in. I prepared my balls off to get ready to fight them. And, and uh, like I said, when I went in there and, and knowing what I knew about Will Choke, my game plan was uh, to go in there and hit him first and knock him out and not let him get warmed up. I've watched him fight before. Uh, he gets warmed up in third and fourth rounds and starts doing a lot better than he does. And and uh, I talked to the promoter, and I told him, I was like, hey, man, if I go out here and I knock this son of a bitch out, y'all give me a three-fight contract, and y'all start giving me bigger names and bigger guys to fight. And they followed through with everything they've said. They've got a, I mean, uh, Tom Schoff, uh getting ready to fight him on the 12th, and wax that mustache for him again real quick and uh then uh i got another guy i plan on uh, it's not official but i'll tell who i'm gonna call I, I got a guy i'm gonna call out right after that when i knock out he's another former ufc guy so and they're following through uh not to let any secrets out but they're following through with everything they've said so and it's been great from beginning to end from knockout to finish to the highlights what they've done for me the way they've treated me amazing so what do you think about uh, matchmaking at bare knuckle fighting? When you kick off, you usually get a weaker name, or it's uh, the way promoter decides. No, man, they want good fights. They, they, that's what's special about them. They don't give a damn if you're if you're Khabib Nagamagamedov or if you're or if you're Conor McGregor. They they they're like they want they want old old stars or. But they also are creating their own stars. You know, bare knuckle boxing is a different sport. It's not UFC. It's not Bellator. It's not MMA. It's bare knuckle fighting. It's not bare knuckle boxing. It's you know. So I think that they're they're uh, they want to they have to be smart because when you're a company, you have to make money. So they're trying to design the right people and do this. But they're they're making fights that make fights. Like me, Tom is not afraid to fight. That dude's got good boxing. He could. He could go out there and peel my face off and make me bleed to death. I don't know. I don't get knocked out, so he ain't going to do that. But uh, he might beat my ass. I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. But uh, they, like I said, I think they're doing it because they know what fights make sense. Even with the fight that I want after this, it's a fight that was going to make people scream and enjoy a fight, man. And a bunch of bunch of guys that fight, dude. They're, they're, I think they're doing what's... Uh, what the people want while while thinking keeping their self in mind if you know what i'm saying it's not a bunch of political stuff where you have to be signed with a certain management company or be friends with a certain person it's just if you can fucking fight come on
According to you, which is the most entertaining bare knuckle fight you've ever seen? Other than mine? Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, uh, Quentin Henry had a. He's actually one of my buddies. But, dude, he had one of the most vicious knockouts that I've seen. He had the American flag trunks on, and he got knocked down like three times in the first round. And then he came back and dropped the guy once, and then he came back and knocked him out. That's my kind of fight, dude. When you don't know who the hell is going to win, and when you think the guy that's going to lose is going to lose, but he comes back and knocks him out that clean, that was one of my favorite fights. I mean, uh, uh, there's been a bunch of good ones, though, dude. I love all of them. I went back, probably, I've watched every single Bernard boxing fight, not only as a stalker to see who the hell I'm going to knock out next, but uh, as a fan, dude, just all of them are vicious and, and awesome and entertaining. Their fights. I can't wait for the next fight to kick off. It's going to be a fireworks for sure. And uh, I'm so glad uh, Bernacle is uh, getting back on its feet. Yeah, me too, man. I'm so blessed that we just got some somewhere to fight, man. You know, with UFC and Bare Knuckle, we're about the only two companies right now running anything. Uh, Bellator just picked theirs up, so fight game's back on, and we're going to kick COVID in the nuts and get back to punching people. <laughs> yeah, outstanding. I mean, I'm an avid MMA fan, I mean, since 1993, but when I watched Becky FC 1, I was like, wait, uh, this thing looks better, this thing is more entertaining, because in MMA you can stay away, you can rest and so, but in bare knuckle you bang all the time. I haven't seen a single fight where you don't bang. Yeah. 100 percent man and i guarantee you I'm, I'm i'm gonna bang every fight you watch me brother i'm going i'm i'm going up or i'm going down one or the other yeah that's awesome that's a real fighting spirit would you like to add something to this interview did we miss something um uh, no man i just want to send a shout out to my team x3 sports gracie baja thanks for knuckle up and all the guys for always letting me come in uh manu he's always letting me come in and cross train a little bit uh, I want to thank my sponsors, uh, Down to Earth Irrigation Landscaping Company uh, here in Georgia. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank Innovative Aquatics. Uh, they, they've had my back forever. Um, um, uh, 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 U.S. Boat Company here in Atlanta, Georgia as well. Uh, uh, God, man, just uh, everybody. My wife, she's my manager. Uh, she, she makes sure that all the paperwork gets done, so any sponsor that doesn't have any headaches, just know that she's been running that shit. Uh, and you, man, yeah, thanks for having me on, dude. Thanks for all my fans. Thanks for everybody for watching. And keep watching. I promise to knock them out and, or go down trying. That's great. Thank you so much for this. I will now start creating video. I hope to make it in maybe two, three hours. It depends on the program, but uh, I will share it uh, during the day. Awesome, brother. Hey, thank you again, brother. No problem. Have a great day, Joe.